Hello Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is your mid-January 2021 Oracle and Tarot reading. My name is Tessa. Welcome to my channel. Um, for this reading, um, I'm going to focus on um, subconscious energies and energies that you are not maybe completely aware of, whether it's within you or in your surroundings. This is a general reading, so it might not resonate for everybody. Um, I'm also not going to be including astrology in these mid-month readings. Those are going to be those are going to be primarily discussed in the monthly readings as far as astrology is concerned, planetary transits, um, and what is going on in your houses according to your ascendant sign. So you could watch this if you're a Pisces, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it <laughs> as far as the introduction. Pretty short and sweet, right? Gonna get right to it. Yeah, so I do spiritual guidance readings. Um, it allows you to get to know yourself on a more intimate level. Um, it allows you to understand some of the different energies that are going on um, inside of you so you can better discern how you want to kind of bat like make decisions, balance things out for yourself. Um, the more balanced we are with the four different elements, whether with, you know, the four different elements is uh, fire, water, earth, and air. And those are the energies that come forward in tarot. And the more balanced we are, um, the better we feel, the more we are able to um, overcome obstacles and challenges in our lives. And depending on, you know, what you have going on in your birth chart, if you have a lot of water in your chart, then that energy is going to really kind of take over a lot. In which case, it, it'll be good to um, kind of dive more into some of the other energies that you do not have uh, in your chart. But, th but that's a little bit more. That goes much deeper into astrology and your natal chart and things like that. Okay. So let's take a look for your mid-January Oracle and Tarot reading. I'm using the Spirit Animal Oracle. This is a really awesome deck. Um, I only used it once in my channel. I think back in like June of 2020, but it's super awesome. Okay, so we have Bat Spirit. A rebirth is assured. Ooh. A rebirth is assured. So you're going through some kind of <clears throat> going through some kind of transformation right now. Dolphin spirit, this and that are true. Okay, so this is definitely about like opening up, uh, opening up your mind in different to different perspectives. Opening up your mind to different truths. Okay, like there's not just one truth. There's not just one way of thinking, one way of being, one way of existing in the world. Um, and this is what's needed as far as like rebirth and transformation and the types of changes that uh, you will be undergoing. Dragonfly spirit, truth transcends illusion. Okay. I feel like, uh, Pisces, this is a really, really important message for you. Truth transcends illusion because Pisces energy, <laughs> Pisces energy dwells in the fantasy. Okay. Pisces, um energy is very much like and I'm not saying that in a bad way at all like I have a very very highly influenced Neptunian uh, birth chart like I have a lot of planets in my 12th house which is ruled by Neptune and Pisces and then I have Neptune in my first house okay so like I definitely um, I feel that Neptunian 12th house energy a lot in my in my life um, I'm a creative writer, you know, so I, I exist in that like artistic realm a lot. I exist in that like very, very spiritual, very, um, uh, very fantasy kind of oriented realm. Um, but I think that one of the biggest challenges maybe for Pisces is to be able to differentiate 
that realm that you exist in with the rest of the world and to be able to understand that like this uh this truth that you feel within yourself even if you think that you know what the truth is even if you you're like okay well we're in god's channel or um this is you know even if you kind of exist more in that like cosmic womb in that kind of realm um or the intuitive realm there there's I feel like there needs to be some kind of deeper understanding that not everybody else exists in the same energy that you exist in. Okay? Like, it doesn't even matter if you think you're right or wrong. Like, that's not even the point, you know? It doesn't matter if you think that your intuition is right or if your uh, instincts are right or if your visions are right. Like what you see can be an illusion for other people so it's more about like being able to exist in reality because because reality constitutes multiple perspectives reality is a culmination of all these different kinds of energies and even though they do say that pisces is a combination of all the zodiac signs so it's kind of like maybe you on a very heightened uh level might feel the culmination of these different kinds of energies the, the point is that for you those energies exist in a very very like potent and a very um a little bit like uh too otherworldly maybe okay and, I, and i'm not saying that to like put anybody down at all like i'm saying that more just to help you grow into um just to kind of help you i mean this is what i do here on my channel you know it's just about uh, you being able to like overcome challenges and um go about your life bringing uh, bringing more awareness to the bigger picture rather than just your own subjective perspective I hope that makes sense okay so a rebirth is assured this and that are true truth transcends illusion so it's like understand that there are multiple truths all around you and that all of these multiple truths will transcend the idea of of it being fake of illusion I don't know I hope that made sense okay which is whatever you say it is or whatever you think it is <clears throat> so it's kind of like about embracing it's going to be more about embracing multiple truths and not just thinking that your truth is the only truth okay Because you might think one thing, you might feel one thing, but someone else's truth, that doesn't mean that someone else's truth is false because people, people, um, will, people will express themselves how they express themselves. People will share their feelings about what they feel inside, what is true for them. And to like dismiss that or to say that's wrong or to not acknowledge that as also a form of truth even if you think differently is not really um it's not really beneficial to you or to anybody else i guess is what i'm saying that's just my humble opinion <laughs> as your spiritual advisor okay because we're all about growing on this channel and learning okay Okay, so let's get into the tarot. I'll, I'm going to pull all the cards, and then we're going to see what's going on. All right, so we have the Six of Wands, Jupiter and Leo, Eight of Swords, Jupiter and Gemini, Eight of Pentacles, Sun in Virgo. Do, 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 do. Three of Wands, Sun in Aries, Hierophant, Taurus, First Major Arcana. Seven of Swords, Moon in Aquarius, Five of Wands, Saturn in Leo, 
Ace of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Two of Wands, Mars and Aries. Knight of Cups, Pisces, is your energy. Ten of Wands, Saturn in Sagittarius. And Three of Cups, Mercury in Cancer. I noticed a couple of re repeats. We're, oh yeah, the eights. There was two eight cards that came out. A lot of Aries energy, a lot of fire energy. Okay. Um, and then we have the Hierophant. Okay. So the Hierophant is, is the major arcana. This is about like, so the Hierophant is going to guide you spiritually. It guides you spiritually, but in a grounded way. And this is kind of what I was talking about with the Oracle cards. It guides you spiritually because you guys kind of like, you guys exist in that spiritual world, I think. Um, but it, it, it guides you to, uh, to where like you can feel a bigger sense of connection with other people because the Hierophant is a grounded spiritual energy. It's more about like establishments. It's more about earth spirituality. It's more about being able to, um, cultivate kind of that spirituality so it exists with a larger group so it can become something more like uh, something more tangible rather than just these like fleeting fantasies and fleeting illusions uh, that we we can dwell in sometimes with our emotions and in our mind you know we kind of like live in, in this fantasy world and the Hierophant is going to ground, you know, because the Hierophant is ruled by Venus and that's the planet of love and beauty and creativity, you know, which is great, but it's like grounding it. It's about stabilizing it and bringing it down to earth um, and turning that beauty into our like everyday religion, so to speak. Okay. Okay, so for the so starting with the six of wands, um, this is definitely victory over some kind of situation. Um, you know, you might have just recently had a kind of rebirth, okay, a kind of a renewed sense of purpose or a renewed sense of self, and you're feeling, you know, very creative, very mighty, very um, like very energetic with your um, creative and spiritual kind of energy. Okay. Um, but then there's like, but then the eight of swords comes right after it, which is like completely the opposite. It's kind of like being stuck in your head. It's like being, um, not being able to free yourself. Like the six of wands is very, it's kind of like a liberating energy, but then we have come something that's completely the opposite of that. So it's almost like you are, you are feeling stuck in your own liberation, but it's probably because like you have to find a way to channel it. If you're feeling stuck in your own liberation, if you're like, if you have this like rebirth, if you have this awakening and you have this moment where you just feel enlightened and you like realize something, if you don't, if you don't cultivate that energy, if you don't use it towards something creative and towards and put it into good use, whether it's a project or work or like just get into the detail of something physically, you know, like writing or painting or something, um, or like something, some kind of job, uh, that you're, that you have to do at work or something around the house. If you don't channel that energy into physical things, this is what happens. This is what happens the the energy starts to like create all this friction in your head um and then you become trapped by your own your own mind and you do this to yourself this isn't anybody doing it to you you do this to yourself so you become trapped by your own mind and then you have to free yourself and the way you're going to free yourself is by putting all those those details all that you know overthinking that's going on in your head and like putting it into projects putting it into into creating things material things okay um, and then once you do that it's going to be you know then you can kind of sit back and relax because all that stuff is out of your head now and now you can kind of just like 
you know, like chill a little bit, look at what you've done. <clears throat> you know, this lady is like at the top of the mountain. She's, she's holding the three pillars of whatever it was she created. And she's proud, but she's not like egotistical about it. She's just chilling, you know, she's just like, okay, you know, like imagine you create something and now you're just kind of like, okay, you know, um, now I'm going to sell it and I, or, I'm, you know, now I'm going to just like sit back and wait for this to manifest into reality. And then we have the Hierophant, okay? And then like the Hierophant will start that spiritual energy. It'll start to bring that, um, it'll start to bring that like uh, abundance towards you. It'll start to bring that like spiritual kind of uh, reflection It'll, it'll bring it back to you when you put it, when you put that beauty out into the world, it, it'll come back. Okay, and then we have the Seven of Swords over here, which is Moon and Aquarius. So this is like, this energy is like, uh, sometimes these Aquarius cards really confuse me. Sometimes, like, I really feel like the meaning of these cards can be really complex. Aquarius energy is typically very complex energy because it's very highly intellectual and it's very, like, very, it can be very specific. But Moon and Aquarius, this always, always comes up for me in, like, the same way. And I used to be really confused about these cards but moon people who have moon in aquarius they don't they they don't like to deal with their like they like to deal with their emotions on their own they don't they don't express themselves to people they don't they run away from their feelings if 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 a, if they're in a situation that starts to make them feel emotional or sensitive like they kind of like they figure out how to get out of that situation okay so it's it's kind of sneaky it's a little it's not really being honest okay it's not because like and I have to say that because it's like there, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of really really awesome positive and great things about Aquarius energy, but the the shadow side to Aquarius energy is very much reflected in some of the tarot cards. Okay, the same way that like uh, Gemini and Sagittarius, you know, like all the zodiac signs are going to have at least one card that reflects a little of the shadow and the negative of that sign. And the shadow for Aquarius energy is definitely like not really being honest with other people about how they feel being a little selfish in terms of like not wanting to uh contribute emotionally or or not wanting to um open their that deeper side to them up to others okay and it kind of creates a bit of a conniving a bit of a sneaky and deceptive kind of energy okay so um, that is definitely something that can be going on here. It's kind of like you choose to be manipulative instead of just saying how you feel. You choose to be, um, and I don't know exactly what this is in regards to because right after that we have the five of wands, which is, uh, which is like conflict. So if there's some kind of conflict in your life, um, if there is some kind of conflict in your life or in your surroundings, um, this is definitely coming up as something in your surroundings. I don't really see this as internal conflict. It could be internal conflict and you not wanting to face the conflict within yourself, the conflict that you have within yourself, that's very possible. Maybe for some of you that is the case and then for others of you there is this external conflict that is going on. And like you have very high opinions about it without really like, uh, it's, it's, it's a very kind of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like a snarky, I, I think of, 
I think of this kind of energy as kind of um, like you think you know everything. Okay. Like you think you know everything. Hang on, my allergies are being... One minute. You think you know everything. You think you're smarter than everybody. Um, yeah. So this guy is, he's run out, he's like, sometimes when we do that, when we act like we know everything or when we think that we're like telling people our opinions or what we're really doing is running away from our own emotions. What we're really doing is we are hiding we're hiding what we really feel inside, okay? Or we've repressed it or we don't even, you know, we've piled on so many layers by that time we don't even really know what we feel anymore. Like, that's a lot of this kind of energy, this like moon and Aquarius kind of energy. It's very, it doesn't really want to open up emotionally like at all. It would rather create, it would rather create chaos and it would rather create this like um, this this delusion, this like um, it would rather create this superficiality than express its own feelings, and that can be really dangerous. Okay, um, there's a lot of really really positive opinions out there about. Aquarius energy and like I said every single zodiac sign has a good and a bad attached to it there's always something good and then there's always something negative okay no one is exempt from that um, but I don't hear anybody currently discussing some of the well okay there are some like astrologers and stuff like that who are discussing uh, because we have some really big uh, Aquarius energy at play over here but there is definitely a shadow side to Aquarius energy, okay? And it can be very egotistical. Okay, so, um, okay, so conflict, um, if you do have internal conflict going on, if you're kind of like battling yourself over here, it's going to come out in the form of inspiration, okay? Or... Um, if this is conflict that is surrounding you, this conflict, if you allow it, if you allow it, this conflict can inspire you to be creative. And like I was talking about this in one of my other videos, I think it was Scorpio. I was talking about this in Scorpio. Like what, are, what we're going to need, what we need right now and probably for the next like four years, for the next few years, especially in, in, in America and probably all around the world, <laughs> um, we're going to need more creative energy. Uh, we're going to need more people figuring out ways to bring people together, not tear people apart. Um, because the things that tear people apart is going to be religion, politics, um, all these like opposing you know, kind of views on different subject matters. Art brings people together. Culture brings people together. Creativity brings people together. Music, writing, sharing each other's stories. This is what needs, this is the main focus over here. So with this Ace of Wands over here, it's kind of telling you to find the creative expression of this energy like okay there's all this chaos going on around you are you going to be part of the chaos or are you going to find something within that chaos that you can extrapolate you know that you can um unearth and turn it into something beautiful or you know find a innovative and this is the good part of Aquarius energy this is this is the positive Aquari of Aquarius energy. It's like, it's like finding a way to bring people together. You know, humanity. You know, there's all this division. Aquarius divides in the shadow aspect. And then in the light aspect, it brings together. And what's going to bring it together is going to be this fire energy, this create creative energy. 
Okay, yeah. So um, starting starting a creative project, having a new idea, being inspired spiritually, inspirationally, creatively, and then taking that step in that direction. Two of Wands, Mars and Aries is very action oriented. And then we have the Knight of Cups. This is your energy. So definitely bringing that Pisces, that that kind of like romantic flair to it, like bringing that unconditional love, that um, that type of energy and infusing whatever project you're working on, infusing your projects with love and compassion and, you know, like romantic expression and things like that. Okay. Um, but there, there is a lot going on here though, because with this 10 of wands, it's kind of like, you know, taking on, you feel like you're kind of, and it's falling under the five of wands. So you might start Maybe you feel like you're carrying a bit of a big burden, like you're seeing you want to do something positive, you want to create something beautiful, but, you know, it will start to make you feel like you have the world's, um, the world on your shoulders and everybody's depending on you and um, it's too much of a burden to carry. But the Ten of Wands is also the ending of a cycle, so this is also kind of like understanding when it's going to be time to just kind of like let go of some of these things or hand over some of the responsibilities to somebody else okay um or just like figuring out how to uh, like see like release it and see uh the path in front of you again okay um I definitely see this as maybe like needing to express yourself, okay? So this could definitely be tied to the Seven of Swords energy where it's kind of like you're hiding from your own feelings. So if you just like open up, this is Mercury and Cancer, okay? These are like three friends, kindred spirits coming together. So it's like if you just like open up and communicate and say how you feel to like a friend or a lover or a family member or something like that, like a lot of these burdens are going to you're going to feel so much better, you know, it's just about, like, and cancer energy is is always going to be about opening up to those that you trust and that you love and who love you, like, it's, it's a very family-oriented energy, it's a very, um, support, it's very supportive, okay, so, like, if you have friends that are very supportive of you, who are very, um, you know, that you feel a connection with, that you feel like you can talk to about the things that you're going through, you know, reach out to them, okay? Like, you don't have to do this by yourself. It, you know, it's not just about, like, handing over the responsibility. Like, when I say handing over the responsibilities, it's not like having somebody else work on your projects for you. If, if you know, I understand completely when people like to work alone and want to do things all by themselves, but just because you're working on something all by yourself, that doesn't mean that you just like shut everybody else out, you know. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, being able to just like call up your friends and be like, hey, you know, like I just need somebody to talk to. And then like grabbing a cocktail together and just like spilling the tea. All right, Pisces, this is your mid-January reading. I hope this reading helped, and I'll see you guys next time.